How's everybody doing tonight? There we go, got my chat box. Great. Hey, can you all hear me okay? I do, I'm using my ear pods tonight. Awesome, Mark. Good to have you on here. Loud and clear. Good, 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 good. But, uh, Edith, good to have you in here. Thanks, Mark. Kathy. Got the usual suspects in here. Hey, uh, if you guys want to screenshot this, you've seen it every Wednesday. Got to put it on here. Yeah, your CYA that you got to do. Swing trading, day trading, short term trading. You can read through this, screenshot it, and read it. It is risky. Everybody knows that. That's why we're here. Try to get better at what we do. I'm going to close that off. I want to run through trade. Make sure I got this on the right one. Desktop. Okay. So this trade here is the one that I actually posted yesterday for a potential fifth wave move. I think we were like we were right here roughly um, when I shot the video and I put it on um, trading view and Twitter. It is Red Bull guys, I promise it's not alcohol. And this was a great, uh, I posted it as a bits trade because it popped off right down here, uh, right at the open. Um, and even if you drop down, it goes to a, yeah, even with a five minutes, it still gave you a nice alert just on bits. This was uh, Adamara uh, ATOM um, stock, just a super good move up and out of there. Now, if you go to that 15 minutes, I had this on here for potential trade. So let's take this off and take my arrows. I am, hey, if any of you all that were on Twitter today, did you like the picture that I posted today that had the arrows and the little boxes explaining stuff? I don't know if any, how many of you all seen that or not. If you, if you haven't, go on Twitter at Snell W. Um, check me out and tell me what you think of that picture because I'm going to do more of them. Good, Greg. Um, I'm going to do more of those instead of, you know, posting, hey, here's a great trade. I'm going to go through and basically grade it um, down with little arrows, uh, green arrows for reasons why you took the trade and red arrows of why you didn't take the trade. Um, that one was like eight, nine reasons to take it or 10 and like one, re one eh, maybe. Um, and the trade worked out really, really well. All right. So when I posted this trade, uh, it was an awesome $2 move um, on just the stock going up on a, it was a third wave move, but it was a bits move is where the move originally came from. And we took it, the market opened and then took off. Uh, now you originally got your entry um, on the 28th before on Friday and then pops off, uh, takes off right here. But cyan crossed over your yellow, the 6-4 moving average lines of your Elliott wave, we were above those, we we're above the purple point of control dots. Um, you got your first green dot because we had yellow and red uh, on the last couple candles of Friday, and it pops off, oscillator, nice, taking off your um, stochastics crossed over, just a uh, just a nice good trade. So when we got up into here, that this was a third wave, and it's uh, it's now 
well, let's see here. It's now a corrective. It's uh, ABC. Now this was one, two, three. This was actually a three, a four, and this was a fifth wave move that turned into a longer three. So we're going to draw a, yeah, Gary, the bias dots basically are on higher time frames together. Uh, like what's the average of those time frames? <coughs> Excuse me. Of what's the direction of the market? So when you look down at that moment, the higher time frames are saying long. Yellows are indecision and red is short. So when you've been in, like say this right here, climb, 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 climb for a couple hours, because this is a 15 minute chart, and then boom, you get your first, uh, now this is, is that one o'clock? Yeah, hell, that's the one o'clock. Boy, that dropped down. Uh, came down. Now, uh, when you d uh, did this, your third wave was right here, then it pulled back up, and this became your number three right here, and then this was your four, because this was the lowest of the pull. So we're gonna drop a channel, fourth wave pullback channel, from this candle to, yes, that was this one right here, and drop it. Now, you wouldn't wanna go long, until you are outside of that channel and you want to be on the six four moving average the red and the red and blue lines right here so you want to be on the outside of those so this candle did open up on the outside of the channel so let's see you have one tiny one one candle right there but we were below uh, we're right on the point of control dots um and then it yanked back down into here. Let's see, this should be, yeah, this was today, this was today. So it came down, opened up, up higher, couldn't make it above the 6.4, drop, actually it was a couple of days ago. Dropped down, came back up, and we just couldn't break out of there. Now, there was a bits move right there at 12.22, and it ran up to 12.53. So 30 cent move. Uh, I mean, if you're smart, moved your stop loss up uh, and got yourself out of there. But uh, grading these trades, you want to make sure that you go through on um, going through all of this. So let's go over to the ES, my favorite one. Let's go over to ES. So, all right. So today we're going to do our normal, what is our overall direction of the market and let me turn off bits and Elliott wave right now while we frame the charts so i do my channel and we use a white channel for the daily a red for the 60. so i'm just going to drop it there it's current this is where we're at right now now that was our previous high right there so we have we leveled off right here where everybody thought we were going to drop and then boom, they rallied it back up for an all time high. I don't know if we'll make it to the top or not. I, they may try running it up one more right in there, but man, all the signs are showing um, way, way overbought. Um, just, I don't know. It's just way up there. But anyhow, this is where we are on a daily. Let's go down to an hour. We'll zoom back out and see if we can get that channel to pick up there we go then you click that little reset button and we know that we're above the center channel line and halfway to the top so daily channel really unless we get a big old runner is not um you know we're not worried because we're not right up here at the top we're not right at the bottom so let's go down to to a 15 minute that I'm looking at the hour chart. We do have a decent channel in there. I just think that we're getting so close to a direction change that we might want to be a little bit more careful. So I'm going to take, I would really take this pivot right here over this one. This one is still a good one. 
Uh, I just think the break out of this one is going to be like, say, the bottom of the channel. Let's just draw two and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's do a red channel. All right, I'm going to do the bigger one off this candle right there, just the current. All right, that has us in the upper half of the channel. And it, this was nice and accurate. I mean, right here, you got nice two good touches. And let me zoom in here. Reading that price action breakdown book, you can see a beautiful big long wick right there telling you to go short to get back in there. Uh, down here, we popped outside of it. So I'm going to do another channel from here to here. And I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to do this one in yellow just so it's different. And okay. This is what I was telling you uh, that this channel is going to be an earlier uh, signal to you for the break down when it goes. Um, right now before you would get a breakdown you you're gonna be 20 15 points um down 16 points before you break out of this channel we're already testing this yellow one right now now this yellow one has actually been pretty darn accurate if you look at it um we just barely got out of there came back and right now we've got a wick on that bottom one and we may push up there. I just think when we break this yellow one, it's gonna be um, a decent break to the downside when it goes. But so now I'm gonna leave both channels on there and let's turn on bits. Okay, so we get this ride down right here. I actually had a bit short right there, which wasn't, um, not a bad deal to take. I would not take that trade because it's too close to the bottom of this channel. And this channel, you know, remains been going on for, uh, I mean, two days, but it's a 15 minute. It's just too, it's been pretty accurate uh, inside of there. I wouldn't take a, a short right by the channel line. So we're gonna look for a long, a reason to go long. And right here, we come back up. Come back up the cyan across over yellow. We touched it, retested it, came back down and pierced through it right here. Let me blow it up a little bit bigger so you can see. And right where it crossed over right here, our purple point of control dots are right underneath it. The purple point of control is actually on the yellow line. So you have bottom of the channel going up, one reason to go long. Cyan crosses over your yellow, two reasons to go long. Above your uh, purple point of control dots, three reasons to go long. You also had three candles in a row for 45 minutes of red candle shorts. You had a nice green, uh, or uh, lower volume, but a uh, green bar uh, bias, or bits turns the it gray instead of green. So you have uh, five reasons to go long. Your RSI, peaked out down here at the hump. The retest of this, uh, trying to get another low, we had a higher low on your RSI. And then it takes off going, pointing up. You also, if I just hover over that candle, if you look down below, you'll see your first green dot you had. For a half hour, we had two red dots. And then we had, the reason to go long. So now we're at six reasons to go long. Now I'm going to turn on Elliott Wave just for a second here. I don't know if it'll paint anything. I just want to get the red and blue lines on there. So here's our six four moving average. We are a bot here. We crossed over here, but your first candle is this one right here, and it never went down. It opened and took off that on this candle right here. This is the first one that was above that 6.4 closed, uh, started above the 6.4 moving average line. Um, same way down here, if you look at your oscillator, we also, that was the last red was getting smaller, smaller, and you had your first green on the next candle out of there. And then my, this inter bar volume thing, I'm really digging this thing. It's, 
instead of just having this normal volume bar that just tells you if it's a green candle up uh, or up or down, it's telling you the volume inside of it. You can kind of see a direction change if you see right here. These bar, this bar is short, completely short, but you've got a bunch of green in it. Then this bar, the sellers are fighting, trying to push it back down as this one goes. And then this one, you know, it's like the green just keeps getting bigger and bigger in the bar and we just keep climbing higher and higher. You can kind of see um, in the middle of your 15 minute candle, the fight going on between them. Uh, and obviously the buyers were winning and it, it kind of gives you a little bit uh, of an early deal. And then as soon as we broke into that channel, look how the volume went, boom, boom, boom. And then sellers are trying to get it back down. Buyers win again. So you've got six plus reasons to take this trade uh, long. Uh, I mean, you might be able to say stochastics wasn't, um, sorry, excuse me, I didn't get the stochastics on over here. Your stochastics crossed over your oscillator. Wasn't as big, but it's still, you just, it was nice uptrend, had that little pullback. And this little hump is smaller than this hump, if you notice. So it wasn't as strong, which your um, cyan line did the retest there and kept on going. So I, pretty much you've got six reasons to go along there. And then um, stochastics actually crossed over here on the first time that it came down. Then we did the retest and then it crossed back over right here. So, which your entry was the next candle after that. So you've got seven, eight reasons to take this trade. None that I can find to not take it um, out of here. So that's that one. Let's go, let's just do, let's do YM. Same way YM, let's go daily. Let's turn off get some real cars. And if you guys notice, I focus a lot on uh, grading a trade and framing it than actually taking the trade um, because you need to know where you're at of what's going on. And let's change that to the white channel. All right, so there's our daily channel on YM. We go down to the one hour. Come on. There we go. All right, so our one hour, that's where we're at. About the same way as the S&P, halfway in between. This is a nice clean channel right here looking for a break. Um, I'm gonna go down. Actually, you know what? Let's drop one on this 15 minute or um, 60 minute. Yeah, that's a nice tight channel. And it's respecting it really, really, really good. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Let me turn off that regular bar. Uh, very, very nice touching it right at the very bottom, crowned out just a little bit. Uh, but, but that's a nice channel going on right there. Now, if we drop down to a 15 minute, we can see more opportunities in there. And then even dropping down to a five minute. With a five minute, you can time your entry a little bit better. Like for instance, if you if you were trying to take a short off that center channel line, if I'm on, let's see what time is that? That is nine two at twelve forty. And do -do -do. Oh, 40. All right. Nah, this 15 minute one actually was good. A, a lot of times you'll get two candles in here uh, or one big candle and it'll have some wicks and you're like, well, where was your entry at? If you drop down into that five minute time frame that you can usually time it like really, really good. Like for instance, 
that candle opened at 954 and the high was 961. So I mean, you only went seven ticks above, which is nothing, uh, especially for the Dow whip around. So let's turn on bits. Now, you know, on ES, I just did 15 minutes. We dropped down to five minutes on this one. And I want to look at the opportunity of where, where you can take some trades out of here. If you look at this, um, we did the same kind of retest, just like the S&P did in the same area. Um, this one respected the channel a little bit better. And you had a long signal here, but more than likely stopped you out on this candle right here. Now let's go down below and look. So cyan went, we were at the bottom of the channel line. One reason to go long. We were above the purple point of control dots. Two reasons to go long. Cyan crossed over the yellow. Three reasons to go long. The RSI was pointing straight up in there. Four reasons to go long. You got your first green dot that you hadn't had in a long time. Right after red, five reasons to go long. Your oscillator was getting smaller. And as this is coming down, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Getting out of there. Now you're, you got a stochastic um, crossover too. So there's seven reasons to go long uh, out of there. And the only thing though is look down here though at your volume down below. Look at, you had high volume down fighting, um, fighting in there like big time, um, trying to keep it down. And they pulled it back down twice before it came up, pulled it back down again before it took off. Um, there was a big fight. You can see where the, the buyers didn't start winning until right in here. Sellers were still winning, yanking it back down. So this one here, you probably would have gotten stopped out right here. And this is just, there ain't nothing you can do about that. You know, I mean, that's the mark. The algorithms are built where most people are going to take the pivot right here. Uh, you're going to wait till stochastics cross over. That's right here. And where does this wick come down? Just drops down. You know what? Let's drop down to a two minute. That is 850. Let's just see how big that wick is. Eight fifty. Yeah, look at this wick on a two minute candle. They just came down and then just, just took everyone out. Anybody that got in in that area. They took out their 10 tick stop loss, easy. There ain't nothing you can do. That's just one, you gotta keep it in there. Now you wait for it. You could take it on the retest again or the retest again over there. That um, every one of those. But keep, keep in mind down here, you're getting a lot of uh, up and down right here. You got an arrow to go short, arrow to go short, arrow to go short, arrow to go short. And we're looking for a long. So it's like, you know what? You might want to sit on the sidelines on that one until you get a clean look over here. This is telling you to look for a short. And bias is telling you to go long. Come over here. We're back down to them. We did it an again, another uh, retest again, crossed over. Now this time, We've got green arrows down here telling you, hey, look for a reason to go long. And we crossed over uh, right here, on, right there on stochastic. Now, keep in mind, this is a two minute chart. So you're gonna see a million more candles um, that are on there. Let's look for an Elliott wave on here. So I'm gonna go over, now typically you wanna go to the overnight, higher low so do, do, do. that is going to be about right here so that is candle 22 198 if you look right here right there 22 198 so we're going to turn on elliott wave and click sprocket 
22, 198. All right, so there was an attempted move that failed. 22, let's see what we got right here. So we came down. There's a two failure or the two your stop out right there. Come back down. Now taking that trade, well, when we look down here, stochastic crossed over. Your bias thought you still didn't have a green yet, even though we were going up. So following the rules over here, we follow the rules and we still got stopped out because I mean, it's the market is the market. It's going to do it. Try doing it again right here for anybody that got in right here. Uh, we're talking, we were looking at this entry and look what, look at the exact entry where we got out. They went 758, 743. They went 15 ticks below it. So and where's everybody have a stop loss? 10 to 12, 10 to 15 ticks. So they took almost everybody out, ran it up again, came back down to that same pivot area right in there again, and then ran it down uh, trying to get, stop everybody out. But on this move right here, we're gonna zero in on this one. Cyan crossed over right here. That uh, Cyan crossed over is one. We're at the bottom of the channel and we've tested the bottom of the channel twice. So we have wick pushing back in, wick pushing back in. Two reasons to go wrong. We're above the purple point of control dots. Three reasons to go wrong. Uh, yes, Gary, it, uh, and it, it'll be up, uh, should be up tomorrow on the website. Uh, we are above the 6-4 moving average lines, four reasons to go long. The RSI crank started going over from down here at the pivot. Excuse me, five reasons to go long. Now, we still had indecision on our bias dot. So if you waited until the green dot, well, look at there, right? Where the cyan crossed over, six reasons to go long. Your stochastic crossed over a couple candles before, seven reasons to go long. You got your arrow arrow telling you to look for a reason to go long, eight reasons to go long. Um, just a not, uh, pretty, not, there's not any reason not to take this trade right here. Came up, retested that yellow line again, uh, EMA, and then took off. I mean, you could have just stayed in it the rest of the day. Uh, you'd been all right on that one. Now, this one failed. And let's let's draw a fourth wave pullback channel on this one. I don't want to like always show you guys some winning trade and tell you that it's so good. All right, so the last fourth wave pullback was right here. Um, now it went here, that failed, came back down, made a lower low. So the four just kept moving down here. After it broke right here, then the it's the wave count has been busted. So we never made it out of that channel. Like it wicked out, but never closed outside of that channel. And if you look, we never made it above the six, four moving average. I mean, it popped above twice right there, but you didn't have a reason to go long at all. Um, down below, we are uh, the crown. We never got the crown until down here. Um, are there Elliott waves without the green crown? Yes, uh, but this when it crowns just a little tiny bit, it uh, is really, I like it better when it has a, a little bit of red. Um, unfortunately, it's too low to get out of there. So that was a bad one. Now, looking on the two minute, you had multiple uh, bias opportunities, like there's one right here. You could have taken this one at 146 that we cyan crossed over the yellow. We're above the purple point of control dots, two reasons. We're above the 6-4 moving average, three reasons. We've got 
um, RSI still pointing straight up Four reasons go long bias dots are still I mean look how long they just stay green five reasons go long your oscillator cranked over the very next candle um, I mean it just was going smaller 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 boom uh, that six seven reasons go long your stochastic crossed over right here at that pivot seven eight reasons to go long now you did have your arrow to look for a reason to go short right there so sometimes you want to like take that into account that there's conflicting information yeah everything's lagging geared on um it'll say everything's lagging on there but when you have that red arrow it kind of makes you wonder like what's going on um that it's telling you to look for a short when the very next candle it takes off so that one wasn't bad and then now we are on two minutes let's look at let's draw another fourth wave pullback take it to that from the three you just click the candle anywhere on the candle doesn't matter if you click up top below it it's gonna uh take it off that candle to your fourth wave pullback all right so you do not want to take a long until you get outside of that channel so we popped out here came down retested it and i probably would have rolled the dice i don't trade the dow very much but i probably would have taken that off that channel line because we got retest 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 boom um now the only thing though is look down here though same conflicting we're getting conflicting information uh we're saying look for a long and then immediately look for a short um uh, out of there now you're going to get more of those on a two minute than you will a five or a 15. but to take this out of here you want to be outside of the channel so we were outside the channel there's one reason but we want the uh, we want to be above the 6-4 moving average lines right here. So we didn't get out of there until right here. So there's two reasons to go long. Above the point, purple point of control dots, three reasons to go long. Our bias dots are good, four reasons to go long. Um, RSI has just been up the whole way, five reasons to go long. Your oscillator is green right there, which it pulled back. Crown was red, so there's six reasons to go long your let's see here you can see here your uh, um, stochastic crossed over retested and then crossed back out so you've got six reasons to go along right there so not um, not really any reason not to take that trade now did we hit our fifth wave target no but you still let me keep my uh, screen straight if you would have taken that trade at 29.078, it still ran up here. Now you hit this high, pulled back and hit this high again. I'm gonna be getting out, even though the fifth wave target is up here, we're at the top of the channel line. And you know, me personally, when we get to the channel line, I have my stop loss right behind it. That I'm not gonna wait for it to pull back and then fail. I'd rather, I'd rather take as many ticks profit as I can next to that channel line and miss out a little bit on the upside of it and then catch it on the re-entry for something coming back down. On it, now let's change this around to a five minute and see what we see different. Now here's that same fourth wave pullback on five minutes. Let's... I'm going to isolate off that pivot right here, which was at 8.30 in the morning. And that is candle 21, 118. So we hit that sprocket. 21, 118. There's a lot of ones in there. And looky there, it looks like the same channels are going to work just about for those channels were drawn on there from the two minute look at that they worked out worked out well um this actually gave you your long the, um one of the things that i've noticed on on a failed fifth wave move it tends to follow the fourth wave pullback channel that we drop on there and look at this it failed 
right here, but we stayed on it, came out of it, popped it. It's like it gives you, uh, when it does fail, uh, eventually when it pops back out of it, you can find your long going out of that channel. Same way with over here, that I haven't even dropped a new um, channel on here. And that's our same entry and getting out of there. That, uh, but let's take this off, let's delete this and draw a new one from third to fourth. Now this time, drawing it on the five minute, it moved it all the way up and it gave us our entry where, look, I don't think, I don't think it went any negative on that candle right the cy your cyan retested it there it came back up and then we were above the purple point control open it went four ticks let's see open no one tick it went one tick negative on you um so not a bad um not a bad move either now like i said did it hit the fifth wave target no but you've hit your you've got green Stochastics crossed over. You had your down here and it crossed, and then we had a retest outside of that top of that channel. So it's retesting the top of the channel, and then your six uh, or your stochastic crossed back over on that the, the second exit candle, which was your entry to get out of there. So that was a good one. Now look at this though. Look how long we've had green on that and now you have yellow and red right now so keep an eye on that one let's switch over what else do you guys want to look at let's look at something else it's drawn rusty it is drawn on a daily i do i do too i do a, a one hour and a daily just to see where we're at now uh earlier on that es1 i did a 15 minute uh, so we look at the daily channel. All right, looks pretty good. Drop down to one hour and just go backwards. Let that channel pick up, hit your reset button. And we know it's there. And then I drop, I drop this channel on um, a one hour that typically I do a one hour. Now here lately, when the markets, uh, I don't know if you want to say a range bound or or not. When they're doing goofy things, I'll go down to a smaller time frame channel because if it fails that channel, my loss is less and I can get out faster. Then um, look at this. We're on a one hour. We're about ready to pop through that channel line. When we were on that five minutes. I told you we were getting a lot of uh, red in there. Get indecision, indecision, two down here. You know, that uh, on that one, we'll keep an eye on it. But on that, on your hourly, we've come down, we've tested the center channel line almost. And you have your cyan line right there. So we'll see what happens with this during the, this webinar. But you just keep you you can tighten this up. Let's say uh, you don't want an hour. Let's say we go down to fifteen minutes. All right, take off these fourth wave pullbacks. Take off Elliott wave, and you're just gonna do it from here to here. Like for instance, let's do yellow. You can take it from this pivot here to the pivot high and look for the break out of that channel. Like this channel is super tight. I mean, look at that. That's almost, let me hide this one real quick. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. This yellow channel, if you look, has been very, very, very tight. Like uh, only violated it really about right there. Now we've had a candle open outside of this uh now this is 15 minutes we've got 5:33 left um uh, we'll want to see what the second candle does if this second candle opens below this one and uh below 
that yellow line, um, that's a EMA line built into bits that if it opens, if we open and go below that, I'm going to be looking for a short, especially now look at this, your uh, false breakout when we were going up has gone away and said, look for a reason to go short. So we have two yellow dots, look for a reason to go short and we're popping out of that channel. So that's how you can take that smaller time frame channel and plus you can look for opportunities that are in there. Now, that yellow channel we know is a 15 minute uh, channel. So we can drop down to that five and look for opportunities inside there. Now, if we're trending up and you wanna be on the safe side, don't take any shorts out of there. You know what I mean? If the market's going up, don't jack around in here. Just wait till we come down and try to ride that back up. Now, if we end up getting another candle that opens up lower uh, on that 15 minute and we see a trend going down, then you can draw another channel from like, say, for instance, you could draw one from let's put this one as red. Just draw one from here to here. If we break out of this channel and this channel, we're probably going to get a move down, uh, the higher probability out of there. And look at our side, it's just slowly working its way down, working its way down, working its way down. And it's chopping, coming down. It's, you know, we're not getting a straight line out of there. It's fighting, 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 fighting. The buyers and sellers are fighting on this one, but there's low volume at night, though, guys. I don't know how many of you all trade in the evening time, but too slow for me. It's slower molasses. I got up at, well, I stayed up late the other night, last week. I stayed at, or this week on Monday. I stayed up and did the 2 a.m. open, 3 a.m., 3.30, and by 4.15, I was mentally out. It was just so freaking slow and quiet. <laughs> And it was so quiet at the house. I go, man, it's deafening quiet. It, uh, I don't think I could do it on a regular basis getting up that early. Plus, it kind of wipes you out for the whole day. All right. What else do you guys want to see? Let's see. What time is it? We got 18 minutes left. TW, stock looks like there's a Wave 5 buy setup, but I'm looking at it right. Kindly check. Sure, Edith. If I can get in here. Trade web, is that what that is, Edith? Okay. All right, let's go to daily. And do 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 do. How far back is that? That is March 18th. I don't know anything about this, so let's. All right, me personally, it's four of 19. So they've only been around a year and a half, maybe. I personally would stick with a channel from here to here. Now, if you're gonna isolate, I would isolate probably from this low right here, from there. So that would be, oops, turned it off. That candle is bar number 241. Let's go 241. And I guess it might help if I turn it on. Let me turn off bits. Yes, you do look like a potential fifth wave move. So let's look at this. We've got, let me blow this up as soon as I can see a little bit better. All right, this is on a daily. We're outside of there. Let's draw a channel on that fourth wave pullback. Fourth wave pullback. We're going to do wave three. Just click that candle down to your wave four. Okay. 
And let's look for a reason why we would want to take this trade. You want to be outside of that channel. Obviously, this candle right here satisfied that. Now let's turn on bits too. All right, bits did officially cro crossed over right here on this candle that came down and touched the point of control, came back and retested it, came back and retested it. Now, when I get um, a retest, retest, and comes back up, that's to me is looking kind of promising. Um, you know what I mean? You never know what's going to happen in this world. So we're outside the channel. You have one reason to take the trade. Cyan crossed over. Two reasons to take the trade. We're above the purple point of control dots. Three reasons. We're above the 6-4 moving average line, which is right. Let's turn off bids. It's this blue line right here. So we were above there. So you have four reasons to go long. And then down below, the only thing down here, though, is you have indecision, indecision, indecision. You got your first green bar right here, but you were below the 6-4 moving average line. Now, it did close up above, though. This You got a little bit of chop going on in here. Oscillator doesn't look bad. False breakout is telling you to stay in it for a long. It's not telling you to get out yet. Not, a, I mean, it's not a bad looking trade so far. That uh, it doesn't look, it doesn't look too bad. We did pull all the way down into the uh, the red zone, so it's a seventy five percent chance that it's going to go up. I don't know anything about them or what they do, so I don't know what's going on in the news. Now let's turn on roller coaster. I haven't done any roller coaster moves today. All right, roller coaster picked this fourth wave move up. Uh, let's see here. Let's turn off Elliott wave. And uh, bits had your move right here. And then roller coaster picked it up after that. Now, roller coaster, you came down, came back up, and went down. But if you took the bits move, you only went. Let's see here when it crossed over. If you took it on that second candle, it opened in the high. It went 59 cents negative on you if you took that um, as a short. Next candle didn't go as high the next time. So nice, good trade down there. I mean, you could have rode the fourth wave um, pullback. What is that? That is 50, 50, 50, Yeah, that's not a bad. And $12 move on a $60 stock. That's not bad at all. We'll see what happens on that. False breakout is saying that the trend is still up. So if this turns and you get a, a red arrow showing down, that means look for a reason to go short. So you may end up having a, a failed fifth wave move behind it. Let's go to a two. 40. Now, see on a 240, the uh, roller coaster picked up this move. Let's go. It's screwing up my pullback. So, yeah, it. There's your uh, move coming down. There's going back up again on the 240. The only thing is on a 240 on a roller coaster move. I mean, now with a stock, it may be a different story. I don't trade stocks very often, uh, not on a regular basis at all yet. But you can get chopped up with uh, on a roller coaster move on these. I like roller coaster on five minutes, three minutes um, to find those moves that are in there. And you can get in and out. I mean, it's like this one here, uh, 8.30. Market opens, take the thing short, you run it down, 10.30, you sell it, and 56, and you got in at 58, you made $2 a share. Um, you know, 100 shares of it, you tie up 5,800 bucks, and you make 200 bucks on it in two hours.
not a bad little move. There was another one right here. Uh, Bits got you in right here at 57.27. And then Roller Coaster got you in at 57.50, but 57.27 and ran up to 58. So a dollar, dollar five, something like that. Same way, 100 contracts. Well, I guess you'll do a thousand on there. 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends on how much you're doing on there. 58. I just don't deal with stocks uh, as often on those. You got to buy a lot of them on those moves that are, you know, two dollars, three dollars. You got to buy a lot of uh, a lot of shares and tie up a lot of money on there. That's what I like about futures. All right, let's name another one. We got about ten minutes left. Swing trade days, you're probably going to be looking more at the 240 chart. Edith is what I would say. I would uh, I would ask Paul on that one for swing trading longer time frames. I don't hold stuff for days and days. I'm in and out the same day. I, in fact, somebody posted that on Twitter today. He's like, unless you have some ungodly amount of money that you can uh, sit back and don't care and absorb the – the swings, it makes no financial sense to stay in a trade for a long time like that. Because you you might be able to, you might be all right seven or eight times, and then it only takes one time to just wipe you completely out, uh, you know, three weeks worth of profits in one day. Uh, build, uh, if you look on the YouTube of the W5T YouTube channel, there are, um, Paul's got tons of swing trading stock stuff on there. So Edith, you can look that up too. That's on there. Uh, if not, send an email to Damien and he can, um, he's the one that puts those videos on there basically. So he knows where they're at and he can send you the links. I don't know the exact links on there. Yes, Gary, you can. Let me show you how you do that. Let's turn off roller coaster. And on do, 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 what you got? LA waves off. All right. So if you want to set up, you got to make sure that you're on the correct time frame that you're gonna do on this. So let's uh, let me go to well, you can do it on a stock, it doesn't matter. Um, but if you're doing you obviously don't want to look at a stock on a three minute time frame. So if you have it on a 240. And you want to cross, like right here, for instance, this was a zero negative trade once it crossed over uh, this candle right here. And then it crossed on this one. So it went 54, it went about 34 cents negative on you before it went up, but it's $4 move on here. So if you want the cyan line, all you do is Click on the line and right click it. Add alert that's on there. And here it is. And it's fast crossing. You have to jump, drop down that value box and put, I think it's this one right here. Fast cross, hold on a second. Let me go back. I haven't set a new one on here for a little bit. Let me go over here and look at my little deal. Your, Fast needs to cross the slow is what that is. So you click OK. Right click that line, add alert, fast, crossing. You have bits, slow, because the yellow was a slow. Now, what you can do is you can put, instead of just crossing, you can set up two different alerts. You can put crossing up, and you could put look for long save that one okay and then you can add another alert fast crossing down bits slow don't forget to change just the slow because you got to match it to that yellow line and then you can put Look for short. 
Great. Continue anyways. And now, when this thing beeps, if it crosses over this yellow going down, you're going to get an alert on your TradingView app, on your email. Now, when you do set these alerts, uh, let me, if you double click this, uh, let's see here. If you go over to your object, let's see, not object tree, your alarm, click your alarm clock. Here's these two that I just set. So double click it. You can put in here open ended. Oh, actually, I messed up here. You want to do once per bar. That way, if later on it crosses again, you'll get an alert. So don't forget to put that as once per bar. Now you can put it notify in your app, notify on pop up, and send an email. And I took email off because I'm like, I don't need it beeping here, beeping on my phone, and sending me an email. It was just, it was too much, uh, too much. So I can save that. And then no matter where I'm at, if I'm in something else, if I'm over here somewhere, uh, that's going to pop up with that, with that time frame and tell me, hey, look for a long. So you can go into your favorite stocks and put those on there. And that way you don't have to sit there and babysit them. Wait until you, um, you know, pick out 10 different things. Uh, now, depending, you can only have... On the premium subscription, you can only have 400, I think it says 400 alerts is the most that you can have um, on there. So, I mean, not that you have 400 stocks. So if you have an uh, up and a down on a one hour time frame on, you know, 10 different stocks, you're talking, or 50 stocks, you're talking 100 alerts. So, I mean, you could do technically 200 if you had them on there. So, yep. All right, guys. Anything else? I hope you learned something tonight. That uh, you're welcome, Gary. That I know I'm. I say this every week. I know I'm very repetitious, but I will tell you, even personally myself, I'll get tied up in the market, and I'm doing this and that, and then if I have a loss, I'll go back and I'll look at it and I'm like, damn it. I didn't follow my own rules, you know? And so that's one of the reasons why I really push grading the trade, grading the trade like this one earlier where we were looking for a long, but down below, no, the arrow was pointing down, 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 down. And it's like, all right, maybe I really shouldn't be doing it. So you're welcome, Greg. That, uh... All right, guys. Y'all have a good night. Rusty, you too, man. It was good uh, talking to you guys this week too. Practice, practice, practice. All right, y'all have a good night. Appreciate you stopping and uh, taking time out of your evening uh, to hang out with me.